The New York Central Railroad, known as the Water Level Route, rides along the shores of the Great Lakes. There are many tight curves along the line, such as Big Nose, Tribes Hill, and the infamous Gulf Curve. On the Gulf Curve, one of the worst disasters of the railroad happened. This is the story of the Little Falls Gulf Curve wreck. On April 19, 1940, New York Central's train number 19, the Westbound Lakeshore Limited, was getting ready to leave New York to head for Chicago. The train was led by 464 J1E Hudson number 5315. This engine was the first of the class J1E. In the cab were 65-year-old engineer Jesse H. Earl and fireman Joseph Y. Smith. Jesse had been an engineer since 1906, and by this point, was only a month away from retirement. Behind it were 15 passenger cars, all being heavyweight Pullmans. An express car, a baggage car, two coaches, four Pullman sleeping cars, a dining car, another five Pullman sleeping cars, and another coach. 250 passengers were on board the train. The train left Grand Central Terminal at 6.50 p.m. with its first stop at Albany's Union Station, arriving there at around 9.45 p.m., 14 minutes late. While there, car knockers and air brake inspectors examined the cars and the station porters took care of the passengers' luggage. At 10.09 p.m., conductor Charles Gretton gave the highball signal and 53.15 pulled the train out of Albany. 21 minutes late. Later, it passed Fonda at 11.07 p.m., making it a further two minutes behind schedule. It then passed St. Johnsville at around 11.25 p.m. The train then entered Little Falls, the only incorporated city in Herkimer County, at almost 75 miles an hour. The seven-degree Gulf Curve was in view of the train at milepost 216, with a speed limit of only 45 miles an hour. At this point, there was no going back. At 11.33 p.m., the Lakeshore Limited left the rails at 59 miles an hour and slid diagonally along the other tracks for 400 feet before hitting a rock embankment. The accident happened just 3,000 feet from the Little Falls Station on the north shore of the Mohawk River. 5315's boiler exploded upon hitting the rocks. 11 of the 15 passenger cars derailed, with most sustaining major damage. The remaining four cars stayed on the track and only had minor damage. All four of the parallel tracks were blocked by the wreckage. The first rescuers to arrive on the scene found a truly horrifying sight with some cars twisted into a tangled mass of steel and others torn apart with their interior contents just thrown about the tracks. More rescuers arrived from Little Falls, Herkimer, Utica, Ilion, and other nearby towns. Bonfires were set for illumination and acetylene torches were used to free victims. The rain, sleet, and snow that began in the early morning hours of April 20th made the whole operation a lot harder. In all, 31 people died, including engineer Jesse Earl and fireman Joseph Smith. Another 51 were injured. Engineer Earl had somehow survived the initial impact but shortly after succumbed to his major injuries with his hands still on the throttle. The final victim was pulled from the wreckage on April 21st. An investigation of the derailment was launched by officials of the New York Central, inspectors of the Interstate Commerce Commission, and the New York State Public Service Commission, who determined the cause of the accident to be excessive speed on the curve. Normally, New York Central engineers usually took pride in making up time on late trains, but Jesse Earl was not going to stretch the speed limit on this trip. In addition to Joseph Smith, road foreman of engines Andrew Bayreuther was riding in the cab. 
With his supervisor observing every move, the veteran engineer took care to make a running test of the brakes immediately upon leaving Albany. He made a flawless stop at Schenectady and reduced his speed for both the Tribes Hill and Big Nose curves. A surviving employee in the engine warned the engineer that the train was traveling too fast, but instead of applying more braking power, the engineer closed the throttle suddenly and the train derailed. With the addition to excessive speed, the sudden closing of the throttle contributed to the crash due to the effects of momentum of water in the tender and of the sudden compression of the slack between the cars, both factors causing the engine and tender to jackknife. Dozens of other trains were delayed in the days following the wreck, including the 20th Century Limited, the Commodore Vanderbilt, and the Water Level Limited between Utica and Schenectady over West Shore Railroad tracks. In the end, 5315 and the passenger cars were damaged beyond repair and scrapped. In 1947, the main line through Little Falls was realigned in a project to eliminate the sharp curve. This required diverting the river farther south and filling in the old channel. The 14-month construction project reduced the bend from 7 degrees 24 feet to 1 degrees 30 feet and allowed trains to continue through the bend at normal speed. After the realignment, a memorial was dedicated to the victims of the crash. Today, Amtrak continues to run this train along the same route. Instead of going 45 miles an hour, the train is allowed 55 miles an hour through the curve. Although engineers now are far more cautious about their speed going through the curve, the story and the horrors of the derailment will live on at Little Falls forever.